Hey friends, my name is Mark Jones at Mr. Mark's Classroom, and I want to share with you a little teaching tip or some ideas in your ministry that maybe will help and benefit you. So we'll just take a few minutes to do this. But today I want to talk about that you and I need to be sure to do the hard things. Yeah, I know. Urgh. Because you and I have to tackle those things that often we would rather send a layperson in to do. Yeah, go do that. And uh, I, I remember, I remember, I remember this this lady. Her name is Mrs. Andrews. We'll call her Mrs. Andrews because that's her name. And anyway, I she she was a challenge because um, she was big and mean, and uh, she sent her children on our church van for the bus ministry. And anyway, there was never making her happy and her, her kiddos were pretty rowdy and, but our, our bus ministry uh, leader, he loved them. I mean, he really did. He, he went and checked on them and brought them and he was so, such a blessing to them. But, um, I, and actually the teachers for their Bible study, absolutely a huge blessing, loved them, hugged them, welcomed them every week. And when they went to big church, they sat together and, uh, and I loved it that they would stay and do that. Well, one day they had made some really bad choices and they did not get to stay. They had to turn around and they had to go back because they absolutely were making it unsafe for everyone. And it was a bad, bad situation. And he meant business. And even though he loved them very much, he just couldn't let that, that go. And he was right. Well, anyway, during the worship service, yes, you guessed it. During the worship service. And that's back when we used to have to sit on the stage, like, you know, sit on the stage. And in the, in the, what would be the front of the church, the back of the auditorium, she walked in and opened the doors and in she came and we all saw because, I mean, the light was great. And so she came in and she pointed right at me with that finger. And then she went like that. And I, and she, she motioned for me to come back there. And the music minister looked over at me and said, that looks really bad. And I said, pray for me. And so I got up and I walked back there and we went into the, the foyer and she began to tell me what she thought about everything and how the her kids are so mistreated and everything was so bad and that we should probably um, quit saying that we love people if we're not going to accept her kids. You know, she was like, like playing every card you can imagine. And it was just like venom, just blah, blah, kept coming. And finally, and I, listen, one thing that I have learned is you listen, you listen because they want to be heard. And if they get to be heard, even if they're wrong, it's still going to help. So they want to, they want to be heard. So I was listening and I was thinking, Oh, lady, you scare me. I don't want to be around you. And, and, and honestly, I, you just kind of sink into that and you can't help it. And so anyway, I said, um, she finally finished and she's like, like, what do you have to say for that? And I simply said, I was told your boys did this, 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 and this. They were asked. They did not stop. And I know that Mr. Leon loves them very much. And you know that too. And he asked them and they wouldn't do it. And for their safety and for the safety of all those other children on that bus, he had to turn around and take them back because we can't have our kids get hurt on that bus. They should have done what he said. And I know that you know that's right. And she said, well, you're right. Well, she didn't say you're right. She would never say that. She said, yes, we're going to let these kids be safe or make sure these kids are safe. Because you really can't argue with safety. Honestly, it's the only ace that we have is that you can't argue with safety. So I pulled that out and said, these kids have got to be safe. 
and we love them. We don't want anything to happen to them. And I know you don't want anything to happen to them. She said, I don't. And so then she huffed and puffed. And I saw when she got outside away from me, she was like, you boys. She tried to kick one and I don't know what else. And so it, it's crazy. But the truth was God gave me the words right at the moment I needed them. And that was these kids have to be safe. So I just want to pass that on to you that you have to do the hard things. Now, let me throw in another one. Well, what if a teacher needs to be fired? Mm. What if a parent needs to be told, you can't go to camp and be a sponsor. You got way too much mama drama. Because you know, those things come up. And that bus ministry illustration is easy to say, yeah, we don't have a bus ministry. We don't have that. You, you've got mean mamas. I know you do. And the deal is you're going to have to step into that. You can't say, oh, first grade teacher, you're kind of mouthy. Why don't you go on in and talk to her? No, don't you do that. If you have a, a parent that's confronting one of your teachers and they're angry, you better step right on up there and say, I said that this won't happen. And this is why. They can take it up with you. You protect your teachers. Don't let that happen. People can't lash out at people like that in, in your church and in your ministry, and especially with another child. Be an advocate for the child. Be an advocate for your teacher. You can take it. You know what you're doing when you step into that, and you can shake it off. Now, people can be ugly, and they can be vindictive, and they can post things and whatever, I suggest you not follow. Hmm. That'll help you sleep better. But I just wanted to challenge you. You're doing the right thing to step into that and to be the person to be that kind of a, a buffer for your teachers to lead. Now, how do you fire someone? Well, it's a hard thing. I mean, because it's confrontation and you're going to have to say, Listen, I don't think your gifts are suited for this. This is what we need to see happen. And that's not happening. I think your gifts would be better in this, this, or this. And I want you to be happy. I want you to be able to serve where you're being gifted to do that in the body of Christ. And help them find that place. And, and I know you can ask your pastor and other staff members, and, um, and maybe for any kind of knowledge or wisdom that they would share. But at some point, you probably are going to have to say, it looks like your, your gifts are not suited for this. This is the wrong age group. This is the wrong place. Let me help you find the right place because this is what's going on. And it, and it can't be. I just can't see that and help with that. With the mama drama, the problem is, is, it feels like you start stirring that and it's all going to come up against you, which is all the more reason not to take her to camp. So if you want to have sponsors apply and you're going to be choosing and you give them a questionnaire, matter of fact, maybe you need to say, I'm going to choose people who work in our ministry on a regular basis and not just all the parents that want to go. Maybe that is what needs to go. Maybe you just sit down and talk to her and say, hey, you know, last year, this, this, and this happened. And so I'm a little concerned that maybe we don't want to do that again this year. It would, it would be easier for me to just not take you to camp, but I really see the value in what you could offer and bring. I just don't want that. And I did this with a, a sponsor a couple of years ago, and um, it helped a lot. I said, what, what, which part of what she did wasn't working and we don't need that anymore? And she said, oh, well, I didn't know. Everyone seemed to think that was okay. And I said, no, they complained. So we just need to leave that part off. If you can do that, I think we're going to be great because I appreciate you. Uh-oh, I heard the chime. Did you hear that? Looks like our time is up. Well, I hope this helps. Sometimes stepping in and doing the hard thing is really tough. And I have to respect you greatly when you do that. Don't let those go. You can make this all a safe place by just stepping in. And your voice, a voice of authority, will be a big, big help. 
Well, your life in kids ministry is a huge gift. I hope you'll go and make it count. And if we can help you, please check out Classroom Swag. We've got all kinds of great resources that we would love to see you have and all of your, your church have. One subscription for the whole church. So you can forward it. You can make copies of it. Tons and tons of great ideas. First day of every month is when they come. So check it out at getclassroomswag.com.